One of the long-standing, important, crucial, central questions of matrix is, of course, how chondrules formed. Now, there are various models to it, but there are also some very fundamental differences among these models. For example, some models um, assume that chondrules formed within the protoplanetary disk by short um, high temperature events induced by shock waves or lightning or whatever. Another set fundamentally different from this is that chondrules formed after the collision of two planetesimals, the material was ejected and this material then solidified into the small chondrules. Now in the second model, where um, asteroids are required or planetesimals, these planetesimals must have been molten, otherwise this would not work. Now if they are molten, um, one could expect that there's also some differentiation going on within these asteroids. If there's a differentiation going on, then the chondrules forming from these differentiated melts or material should reflect this kind of differentiation. Now to test whether we can see these kind of differentiation, um, we can look at this plot here. In this plot on the x-axis, there is the um, mass ratio of 1 divided by silicon, and on the y-axis, there's the mass ratio magnesium divided by silicon. These kind of plots are quite convenient because magnesium silicon versus 1 divided by silicon produces mixing lines that are straight lines. Otherwise, you would get some kind of um, hyperbols or something like this. So, for example, up here is forced right, and then when silica is added, this develops along a line down here to anzatite and finally silica. So there is one straight line, a mixing line going down here. Or um, into this direction, there is the addition of iron, so this, is then, this then produces ferrite. And of course, if then to ferrite silica is added, there's a second mixing line into this direction also arriving finally at silica here. Now then, um, we can take all the data from MedBase, bulk control data, and plot, that, plot these into this diagram here. And what we then observe is that, of course, ordinary chondrite chondrules are not very magnesium rich, so they are a little bit shifted from the phosphorite silica mixing line towards more um, iron rich compositions. However, then all the chondrules here plot on mixing lines between olivine, olivine is here, on mixing lines between olivine and silica. So somewhere along such lines here. Now to test this, um, this plot also contains trends, um, evolution trends of melts. For example, here this orange star in the middle is the bulk composition of an L chondrite. And then the MELTS program available online is used to calculate an evolution path for the MELT that develops from this initial composition. And this evolution path, path develops down here. And apparently the chondrules do not follow such a path. And then a second trend is added here, starting up here. So these are terrestrial rocks, so starting with some periodic material. And these terrestrial rocks also develop, similar to the elk chondrite melt, down here. Just that in this case it's not a calculation, these are real rocks. And again, the chondrules do not plot on such a trend here. So clearly, the chondrules do not reflect the composition of a differentiated parent body, which can be the case, because these here, just take a different color here, these here, so the red points, these are eucrites. So they come from presumably Vesta, which, was, which is a large asteroid and um, likely um, differentiation occurred on Vesta. And these eucrites reflect differentiation because they plot on such an evolution trend here. But the chondrules do not. Also, there are sometimes class found that are granitoidal in composition down here, so this is one of these class, and these are two of these class. They also plot 
close to such a trend and evolution. And then they're just silica-rich class, something like here. They plot more where the other chondrules are. So the conclusion here quite clearly is that chondrules do not reflect any kind of differentiation. Rather, on the contrary, chondrules clearly reflect that they form from some kind of mixture between roughly olivine and silica or pyroxene material. And one explanation is that chondrules during their formation acted as open system and reacted with the surrounding gas there by exchanging material and this would then produce this kind of mixing and also explain the variation in bulk chondrule compositions that we observe in meteorites. <coughs> 